Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to another review. Today, at your request, I am looking at another train set. I've talked a lot recently about how expensive this hobby has become and how it's self-destructing by putting off newcomers. So I thought today it might be nice to look at maybe an exception to that trend. And so with that, I've got this. This is the City Express train set from Hornby. And this one's slightly unusual because it's a retailer exclusive, which is not something Hornby does much of but it is exclusive to WH Smith. I guess they're big enough to attract Hornby's interest, I don't know. But yeah, if you don't know about WH Smith, they're a shop that sells like stationery, books, games, that sort of thing. And they're all over the place, at least they are here in the UK. And this is their train set. And it was incredibly inexpensive. I ordered this from their website and I had it delivered, I think, free of charge, no postage on there, and the price was £69.99, which for a large train set seems to be very reasonable. And this train set even includes a set of points, as you can see, and the RRP for a set of those points on Hornby's website is £14.49, which is 20% of the entire value of this train set. So crazy, I think it was reduced, the thing is, because it was exclusive and it wasn't a bunch of different retailers, I couldn't shop around and find the RRP, but it must have been a lot more than that. Begs the question, why have these been reduced so much? Well, I don't know, but if I had to hazard a guess, maybe it's because the livery on the Javelin locomotive that you get here is very clearly fictional. I mean, giant lettering, City Express on the side. It's clearly very unrealistic, so maybe that's limited the appeal of this set. That would be my guess. But let's take a look at this very, very thrifty train set and let's see if it's any good. All right, so I think this ought to be pretty interesting then, mainly because this contains a class 395 or a Javelin, which is a Hornby model that I have never tried before. As I understand it, the 395 comes in two different varieties. There is the Hornby Railroad version, which I assume is gonna be the one in here, the basic model with not much detail, but there's also a Hornby Railways one as well. But I understand that the Railways and the Railroad model were released at around the same time. So does that mean that the two are the same model? Sometimes Hornby do that and then they just upgrade and improve the Railways version slightly. So I'm hoping this ought to be a pretty decent loco. I guess we'll find out. Anyway, they've cheaped out on the box a little bit. There's no artwork on the back. In fact, there's no printing of any kind. But on the side of the box, you can see there is a product code here, just in case you wanted to look it up. So I think it's this one here, R1239M. And as for the contents of the box, there's some info down here. So it does appear to contain a track mat, which again is impressive at less than £70. Even the Harry Potter train set that I bought from Hornby, which was, you know, into the hundreds, even when it was heavily reduced, that didn't have a track mat. Looks like a three car set, so it is the bare minimum really, isn't it? Plenty of track though, as I say, including the points, plenty of straights, and my favorite controller in all the world. Burns very well, keeps you warm at night, it's excellent. Anyway, <clears throat> let's move on. Uh, I think I'm going to need Rusty. In fact, Rusty's got a new friend, let me find him. This is shiny, this is Rusty's upper crust brother, who does a much better job. Look at this, Rusty, I hope you're watching. Right, there we go, I think we're in. Right, so I can just lift the lid now, I guess. All right, okay, City Express. Let's take a look at this hideous livery. Okay, so first of all, we've got even more than was shown on the front of the box. We've got a re-railing tool inside there. Second of all, everything's upside down for some reason. All right, well, that's easily rectified, isn't it? Okay, so I don't think I'm going to go into this. It's just, in fact, no, I am, because it's going to have instructions for the javelin. So we've got a re-railer in there. It's for putting stuff on the track. We've got a track mat, which is for putting your track on. And then we've got this. <laughs> okay, so the title suggests that this is a very detailed manual. High speed train, operating and maintenance instructions. Okay, so it shows an incredibly primitive coupling, lubrication, and it also shows us what sort of mechanism we're dealing with here. Hmm. Okay, that's it. 
hideous controller instructions, don't really care about that. And I think that's about it. So we've got an owner's manual, of course, but I've looked at that, I think, in every train set video I've ever reviewed. So you probably don't want to see that again. It's certainly nothing of importance anyway. Right, so I've got to say, maybe I've been a bit mean about the livery because it actually looks pretty decent. I'm getting, I'm getting Virgin vibes from it, I guess, sort of. Not keen on the City Express lettering on the side. Uh, I think that is quite off-putting, actually, to anyone who's thinking of collecting this for any serious modelling. Yeah, can't help thinking a real livery would have been better, but, you know, it doesn't matter, I suppose. Okay, let's pull this baby out then. Let's have a look at this. I don't know if this is the driving car or not. No, quite clearly this is just uh, an undriven coach. Uh, it's got pickups in it, though, which is a good sign, just on the front there. So, does this have lights? If this train set has lights, I will be reasonably impressed. And we'll take a closer look at this in a minute, but yeah, it seems to be a fair amount of detail. Good looking pantograph on there as well. It's going to be a cheap and flimsy one, knowing Hornby, and yes, you can see it's already broken. <laughs> great, great. But no, for a train set item, this looks reasonably impressive. So, is the, I don't know, is the drive mechanism going to be in the coach, maybe? No, don't think so. It seems pretty light. So, no pickups on this. But again, the detail is great. Yeah, this is really, really good for a train set, isn't it? That's just the livery. Why would you do such a livery on this? I don't know. Anyway, yeah, that looks good. That looks really decent. So, this must have the drive in it then, this driving car. Let's have a look. Is it heavy? <laughs> no, still not very heavy. But quite clearly, yes, this is the driving car. Oh, it's got traction tyres on it, rubber tyres. I mean, kind of makes sense because it's quite light. And it is a train set, I suppose, but yeah, not keen on that. Um, the wheels look dirty. Yeah, the non-driving wheels at the front with the pickups. Looks like it's, they've been used. That's a bit strange. Okay, fair enough. On the plus side, the pantograph doesn't appear to be broken on this one. So that's good. We've got half marks on that then. Right, so let's have a look at the track. Uh, so what have we got? So we've got a point correcting curve, just a single curve there. Uh, we've got the set of points and three straights, one of those being the power track, <laughs> which is also just broken. Little knobs just come off it. Okay, let's put that back on. Hmm, not sold on the quality so far, but you know, it's Hornby curves so this is going to be third radius and there's enough here for a whole oval i think it's eight pieces to an oval so there's that and then there are a couple of straights as well which make the oval more of an oval and less of a circle all right double straights those and then a nice inclusion is the buffer stop yeah nice nice accessory to have and then uh yeah my favorite i'm not going to get this out i don't think i suppose i'll have to later on but uh, you don't want to watch me do it and what transformer has it got uh some people are interested in these stats 19 volts half an amp not much grunt to it that's putting it mildly and let's see if there's anything under the tray no so that is it so overall i mean for 69 pounds 99 this is really decent just for this pack alone, these days, £69.99 would not surprise me at all. To say I've got the controller, hideous as it is, and a track mat and points and all of the track with it. Yeah, doesn't seem bad, does it? Doesn't seem bad. But let's have a little bit of information on the javelins, and then let's take a closer look at some of the detail. So the Class 395 first entered service in 2009 and 29 sets were produced, usually seen as a six-car train. The Javelins can operate at a maximum speed of 140 miles per hour, although they do run on some legacy lines at times and obviously they're not going to go that fast then. And each set can also seat up to 340 passengers, making them a very modern and efficient high-speed train. They run on 16 210 kilowatt electric motors, which produce an acceleration of 0.7 meters per second squared, which is quite significant for anything on rails. And of course, as a relatively modern high-speed train, these can still be seen out there in the world. So there it is up close and personal for you, the railroad version of the Class 395 from Hornby. 
And yeah, like I say, this is really quite decent. To say it's train set fodder, the level of detail on this is really quite good, as you can see from the moulded detail on the top. And that does make me think I'm probably right in suspecting that this is the same model as the Railways version of the Javelin, just with a simpler livery, of course, and it's got some of the detail stripped off. For instance, it doesn't have any interior detail, as far as I can tell. I think the Railways one does. But yeah, apart from that, it looks very, very similar. But if you are an owner of the 395 in the Railways range, then let me know if that's the case or not. Either way, I was right in saying that this isn't very heavy because it comes in at 250 grams, and that's three grams less than a Backman 08 shunter, so good luck hauling the full six-car train with something like this. But then again, to be fair, it does have traction tyres, so it's cheating a bit, but I expect it probably would be able to do that. So yeah, the livery is not fantastic, really. It is very, very simple, as you'd expect. That's probably how they were able to produce it so cheaply. Uh, but the printing's all right. Yeah, the City Express, it's an interesting logo. Looks a bit like a Year 10's ICT project, but still, yeah, it's better than nothing. And there is a bit of a running number on the side there. <laughs> Again, just a standard system font on there, nothing special. But all of the different masked areas look okay, so you've got the black around the windows, yeah, it's all fine. The join between the silver and the red, yeah, it's quite good. And then, of course, you've got the yellow end. The painting in general is okay, that's for sure. Although, I suppose something's gone a bit wrong here, hasn't it? Crikey. Separately fitted detail, not much to speak of. Most of the detail is just moulded. That goes for the bogies as well. I suppose it's okay, the doors look all right. Nothing to shout about, but they certainly do the job for a train set. These wipers on the front might be separately fitted, I'm not sure. They could just be a part of the glazing piece and they spill over onto the rest of the body, but that looks all right. And then you've, there's definitely some sort of transparent plastic going on with the front lights. So hopefully this has got real working lights. That would be a really fun feature, I think. And then of course, we've got the almighty pantograph, <laughs> which uh, it looks very Hornby, shall we say that? And if I lift it up, you can see <laughs> it like topples forward. There's no springing to it or anything. It really is just plastic and uh, it just stays where it is based on its own friction. I mean, if you've got overhead catenaries or whatever, this is, this is not gonna stay on them, is it? Look at it. <laughs> it doesn't even stay in its center position. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, let's put it back down and pretend it hasn't got a pantograph. Yeah, it, it's a it's your standard Hornby pantograph, shall we say. Then around the back, the moulded detail again, quite a bit of wiring depicted there. And then you've got the uh, comedy coupling, which uh, yeah, doesn't seem that great, to be honest. Uh, definitely quite a primitive solution, as you can see. The wheels, though, are really cool. I love the wheels on this. So you've got the painted centres, Definitely non-standard wheels. They've got their own sort of moulded detail on them. Yeah, that's really cool. For a train set locomotive that costs £69.99, this is totally fine. Much the same is true of this coach. I'd be pretty cheesed off if I'd bought this as a Hornby Railways model and it arrived like this, but with perhaps a bit better decoration and some seats inside. But again, for a train set package, this is perfectly okay. So it's the same sort of deal with the windows and such, all looks fine. A little bit of decoration, they've gone with the underscore motif there, which, uh, well, it's, it's, it's something, isn't it? And you've also got a number on there too. The roof, again, is probably the best aspect of this, and it's a good job because you obviously look down on a train set, so that's what you see. Yeah, it's very decent, the moulded detail. Same sort of thing with the wheels as well. I do like the wheels, probably my favourite feature on this, actually, which is good. And the thing about it as well is that it's neat and tidy. There's no glue visible, there's no messes in the decoration. So, again, let's not forget, for the price, this definitely seems to do the job. And this weighs in at 140 grams, so it's not sort of feather light either, which is decent. Anyway, the other power car is much the same as the first, so I'm not gonna bother showing that. The train set is exactly the same as the others I've looked at in terms of track setup and such, so I'm not going to do that. What I will do is set up the controller that came with this set with my usual track, and we'll see how the loco performs. If you're interested in seeing how the train set assembly goes and what sort of quality we're dealing with there, you can check out one of my other Hornby train set reviews. I'll pop up a link in the top right now. They are all exactly the same thing in terms of track and control. Okay, let's move on. So there it is down onto the track, the Hornby fictional livery javelin. And doesn't it look good? 
it looks surprisingly good for a 70 quid train set train. It really is quite impressive. This set is definitely best viewed from a distance like this, and then it's pretty much fine. Okay, so I've already filmed the first performance test, and I'll show you that in just a moment. It was pretty amusing though, so yeah, you've been warned. Slightly less amusing was the mechanism and the internals of the locomotive, which is pretty much what you would expect for a Hornby train set, and probably not that unreasonable at £70, although I'd be interested to know whether the same mechanism is inside the Hornby Railways Class 395, and I'd also be interested to know what the full price of this train set was. But anyway, half of the Loco's wheels are not actually driven, so that's a little bit on the shoddy side. They do have pickups on though, so that's okay. Half of the driven wheels have rubber tyres fitted to them. Not a fan of that feature at all. I'd much rather just see a heavier locomotive instead. But the base keeper plate is screwed on, which is quite good. So you undo the screws and then you can clip it off quite easily. But this reveals a lack of proper turned metal bearings. Obviously the drivers just sit into the plastic chassis, which again is probably what you'd expect for something like this. Now removing the body reveals the circuit board and I thought, oh great, this is DCC ready. But no, as you can see, there is no socket on there. So this is not a DCC ready locomotive, which is another missing feature. It's unfortunate, but they didn't claim this was DCC ready, I suppose. I did notice the comical resistor here though, which has just been bodged across two pads on the circuit board. So it looks a little bit janky. And then this is the bogey, very, very basic. It's just a motor with dual worms, no flywheel, of course. And I'm not sure whether or not this is a five pole motor, but based on the performance, I'm not really convinced. But to sum it up, it's not the greatest mechanism in the world, and this is kind of reflected in the performance. The gauging is significantly below the standard. The back to back here comes in quite consistently at 14.1, which is quite below the standard. So yeah, a little bit on the loose side there. But overall, it's pretty much what you'd expect. Right, let's go back in time then. Let me show you how that first performance test went. Right, so let's start putting this together then uh, so I can actually test it. And while I'm doing that, I'll talk to you about how free rolling the coach is. The answer is pretty free rolling. It's very, very good. Went all the way down Gordon's Hill, around the first curve. And of course it's a good job because it's got to be hauled by a 250 gram locomotive with rubber tires to help it along. So yeah, that's a pretty good sign. Right, let's find out, does the train set work? I'm using the Hornby controller, as you can see. Let's give it some juice. <laughs> this knob is absolutely awful. <laughs> Just feels really bad, yeah. Worst knob I've ever twiddled, definitely. <laughs> but why isn't it, oh, hang on. Yeah, it's all right, it's all right, false alarm. <laughs> right. Ooh, what note was that then? Somebody with a musical ear, you can tell us. Let's hear that again. Mm. Oh, very nice. Didn't know this was complete with musical accompaniment. What note in reverse, perhaps? Same note. Okay, let's go a bit further. That's half power there. Ooh, it's a pretty good crawl, I'll give it that, but why is it crawling at 50% power? <laughs> Look, this is supposed to be a high-speed train, Hornby. I feel as though oh, that button is so super stiff as well. 50%. Right, so it's very smooth. I'm not keen on the musical note that's issuing from it, but... Yeah, the biggest, ugh, this button, this awful, awful controller. It's an absolute abomination. Yeah, it's real slow. Why is it so slow? Full speed? All right, so if you really hit it with a high speed, come on. It's just the button gets stuck. All right. It goes at a decent speed but even so it's not fast so yeah as an eight as a, as a high speed train this controller is doing my nutting folks crikey right yeah it's it's just it's very smooth and controlled but the gearing doesn't seem to make a lot of sense unless unless it 
speeds up and gets better as it runs in, which it might do. Um, but yeah, at the low end seems okay. Let's see if we can. Oh, for God's sake! Let's see if we can do a crawl. Let's go in close. Right. So I'm expecting this to be pretty good. Let's see if it is. All right, a bit more. All right. So it's actually. It's actually not that slow. I thought I'd be able to get a real good slow speed out of it, but no, it just kicks in at about there. Oh, that's disappointing. What's the point of it being slow if it doesn't even crawl? But no, again, you know, I'm being humorous, but this is a train set locomotive. It is fair enough that it's not performing excellently, and it might be better when I've gotten rid of this abomination as well. On the plus side, there are working lights. That is brilliant. I love that feature, so if I can... Yeah, and they are directional as well, so when the loco goes away from you, you've got nothing. And then when it comes towards you, you've got cool white LEDs. Looks like a pair of them, perhaps. Ah, it's really nice. And are they on both ends? Yes, great. So the even the dummy car has got LEDs in it. So that's a good feature, at least. Right, so you're supposed to run in stuff like this at half speed you're not supposed to run it in at full power so that means it's got to run in like this <laughs> but it could be the controller i suppose this is not my normal controller so we'll swap it in a bit so <laughs> the title of this train set has taken on a certain irony now hasn't it the city express everybody you know i'd propose a new name Let's scrap the City Express. How about uh, City Snail? City Old Man Walking With His Dog? City Oh No We've Derailed? Please pause the service. Wow. It is derailed and stopped. What a journey. It is the greatest train ride of all time. In all seriousness though, that's annoying. Well, what do I do now? Okay, City Snail round two. I just tried it again and it didn't do it. So did it just, did I put it on wrong? I don't know. I'm watching carefully. Oh, well, if it derails at this speed, what hope has it got? Oh, tell you what, the slow speed brings a bit of a sinister suspense to it all, doesn't it? Yeah, it's not done it that time. So are we okay? We'll have to wait another 45 minutes for it to get around to that curve again and see what happens next time, I suppose. But yeah, it looks as though the City Express, sorry, the City Old Man with a poorly dog, <laughs> is finally on its way. Destination, Toy Town. Estimated time of arrival, 2025. It's a bit of an insult to the Class 395, really, isn't it? Half speed, yeah. Maybe it's supposed to be a slow motion train set. That's that's a cool idea. Well, well done, Hornby. So you have to pretend that time is passing at about 5% of its usual rate. And then, actually, the scale speed of this is really quite good. Is it me? Or is it getting slightly faster? Uh, I think it's probably just me. <laughs> it's literally slowed down again. So I've been for lunch. I've watched an entire TV series. And here I am back just in time for the second lap. And the question is, was it worth the wait? Let's see. Okay, it's another successful lap. Right, so it's not getting any faster. Let's try it at full speed just to see how it takes that curve and then I'll get rid of that travesty of a controller. Okay, high speed test, fingers crossed. Oh yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So that looks all right. And I've just remembered that the Hornby controller has a high mode and a low mode so on high mode it's actually quite a bit faster still not 
as fast as you'd perhaps expect, but definitely more normal. But no, the, the actual output of the controller isn't as bad as it first looked. <laughs> Thank goodness. Okay, so this is it with the dial turned up to half on my gauge master, and it's now running at a much more normal speed. So yeah, it's just, it's just the controller, I think. So that's good. It means the speed is actually quite sensible. And after this is running properly, I will demonstrate a crawl for you on the gauge master controller. But uh, if anything, the message is, if you're, in, if you're serious about model railways, you need to do away with your Hornby train set controller as soon as possible, because your experience is going to be so much better with the gauge master. So the performance is bad when it's working normally, but with this example, for some reason, if you turn the dial back to zero, and then try to flick the switch, and that's what you're supposed to do. The switch has got like an interlock on it, which stops you from flipping it when your trains are actually running. Uh, so yeah, you turn it back to zero, then you're supposed to be able to flip the switch. But that doesn't work on this one. <laughs> you turn it to zero, you can't flip the switch. You have to turn it up a tiny bit, and then the switch flips. So yeah, it's just a terrible quality controller, <laughs> to be honest. Not recommended. Okay, folks. We are back, and yeah, it's all right, it's all right. It's, it's derailed a few times, annoyingly. Uh, very intermittently, though. Uh, yeah, it stays on the track, I would say, 90% of the time. One in 10 laps, it comes off. <laughs> Annoying. Anyway, let's see what the performance is like on the Gauge Master at the low end. So I'm just gonna ease it up now that it has been fully running. And this is what we can then compare with other Loco's performance. Oh, so I honestly thought that this would be much better on the Gauge Master, but uh, it was pretty much similar to the Hornby, really. Just suddenly starts to go at a not that impressively low speed. But it's not making the, what, the F sharp or whatever it was, <laughs> note that it was before, as you can hear. It's now perfectly quiet, which is another reason why I prefer the Gauge Master, because I don't end up with a migraine after five minutes of playing trains. That's a bonus. Yeah, so I think the performance is slightly better with the Gauge Master. Maybe that's just because it's so much quieter and smoother now, but yeah, it does seem to be all in the controller really, doesn't it? And don't get me wrong, I think actually the performance is quite good for what it is. Given how rubbish the mechanism is, quite objectively, uh, it really was mainly the controller that was responsible for the poor performance. On a decent controller, I wouldn't have much cause for complaint here for 70 quid. I, mean, I think better to pay a bit less, <laughs> better to knock off 20 quid for the rubbish controller and get it for 50 quid and supply your own. But, you know, pickers, beggars can't be choosers. And this is all right. Pantograph keeps coming loose, though. I've just noticed that. Go on. There we go, <laughs> it took longer than it should, so I've cut that out. Right, off it goes. All right, nice sensible speed now, that's good to see. That's at 50%, by the way, yeah. So that's more as more like what it should be. Then on the middle line, I've got the Beatles Eurostar set from Hornby. Gotta say the Javelin is better than the Eurostar, in my opinion. More detail, more finesse. Uh, although, of course, it would have been nice to have the extra vehicle, I think. And then for a slightly larger high-speed train, we've got one from Backman here. Can't even remember what this one is now, blimey. It's been a long time since I've seen it, but there we go. Thought it'd be nice to run that. So very clearly this thing is far from perfect, but at 70 quid, it's hard to argue. It looks good, it runs well in the end. And so it's, I think this is a really good budget train set. Great to have a set of points included because obviously that gives you shunting opportunities and it means that you can expand your layout. Considering it has a set of points, I think the value is especially good. I definitely don't like the controller, but I mean, it's just, it's gotta be there, hasn't it? And it does allow you to run your trains, I suppose. Um, but it would be nice to see Hornby develop a slightly better quality controller to put in their sets. Something like the Gauge Master controller Something like that in terms of quality and performance would just make Hornby sets for me. They would just be so much better. But it is what it is, I suppose. For 70 quid, it's a decent little train. And I think that sums it up. Let's have some ratings then for the Hornby City Express train set. 
Obviously with this one, context is really important because if this was marketed as a serious model that serious enthusiasts were supposed to buy and run, then of course this would be unbelievably naff. But I am trying to reflect the fact that this is supposed to be a fun little fictional train set. Having said that, the level of detail objectively falls at around 2.5 for me. It's got some good molded detail, that's for sure, and the quality of the paint is okay but I'm not convinced by the actual livery. The lack of interior is a pity, although I suppose the, the lights are a nice addition. But the level of detail is definitely of a train set sort of standard. The performance I've given three star now. On a decent controller, the actual locomotive and such is quite good. It's smooth, not the greatest slow speed performer in the world, but okay. The thing is though, this is a review of the set, not just the locomotive, and so I have to consider the controller which is pretty bad, <laughs> just, I was using it for two minutes, it really just got on my nerves and irritated the heck out of me. You don't really want that when you're trying to entice somebody into a new hobby, so yeah, the controller is a big letdown, and in fact, it's probably quite generous to just knock three star off it. The pulling power of the locomotive is okay at 0.29 newtons or 19 coaches, I mean, it's less than a Dapol Great Western rail car, <laughs> which doesn't have traction tires by the way. It's even less than an 08 shunting locomotive so it's certainly not impressive but of course 19 coaches is more than enough for this to haul its six car set uh, at least unless you've got an incline or something. The mechanism though is a two star for me because it's got no proper bearings on the driving wheels. It's only got four out of eight wheels driven. It's got traction tires, rubber traction tires, uh, no DCC socket, no flywheel, and I'd also be very surprised if the motor was five pole, but obviously I don't know, so I'm not, I've not knocked it down even further for that. Yeah, it's not the greatest mechanism, but it does run okay with the right controller, so it's not going to help you that much if you've bought a Hornby set and you want to use the Hornby controller. The quality though, I've given three and a half star. I mean, it's not the worst, to be honest with you. Yes, the model is quite light and plasticky and the pantographs are pretty darn bad. But apart from that, you know, it's all right. The quality of the paintwork's decent. It's not falling apart completely when you touch it. It's got metal wheels, that's a nice sign. So it could be worse. It definitely could be worse. The value for money though, I don't know what the full RRP was. If it was 150 quid or something ridiculous like that, then this would be an awful value product. But at the price I paid, £69.99, this is the kind of value that many people say has been lost in this hobby. And it's certainly very rare to find a set that costs as little as this these days, particularly one with so much track and such. But it is good to see that at least somewhere, this kind of value can still be found, even if you have to go to WH Smith of all places to find it. But overall that is 6.51 out of 10, not so bad for a train set I suppose. Into the logbook it goes and it is 28th place above the Helgen 15 and below the 060 Sentinel from Hornby. Yeah, it's far from the worst train set I've seen. If you like modern image, then this could be one for you. Well folks, that will do it for this review. Thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this. This has really made me curious about the Hornby Railways Javelin now. I really want to get one of those and see how it compares. Is it the same model? Does it have the same sort of mechanism? How much more expensive is it? So yeah, maybe, maybe if you know the answer to those, maybe don't comment them. Maybe you should keep them a secret and I'll find out in a future video. I've looked on Hornby's website and they don't currently have any in stock, so <laughs> it may never happen. But if they do release a new set, Maybe I should try it, maybe. But for now, this will do it for the train set for the railroad version. So thanks for watching, folks. You take care. I'll see you on the next one. All right, cheers, everybody.